Shalom, family. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah. He's our Father. And Yahusha, who is the Mashaya, the one that carries the burden of Yah, his voice, our high priest, soon coming king. Hear, O Yashar, Yahuwah, who is our mighty one, he is one. There is no other mighty one besides Yahuwah. And Yahusha is his voice. This is Brother David coming to you again to ask the question, How do I keep Yah Shabbat? This is part four. Here's another question. What is work? We learn from part three. Did Yahuwah, the master of the universe, the creator of all things, he who is seated upon the throne, Rain down manna, bread from heaven. For the children of Yashar, while they were in the wilderness, there was instructions attached. He told them that you can gather this bread, this manna, during the six working days. But on the sixth day, you were to gather twice as much Bake what you can bake, boil what you could boil, and store up some for the next day. For the next day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah. Even though they were given clear instructions, we find that the Father told them that there would be no manna poured out on the seventh day. But they went out looking for Mina anyway. And the father said, How long will these stiff neck Negroes refuse to keep my laws? And I answered that from generation to generation to generation. It comes down to us to make this change, to return to the old way, which is the good way that we may find rest for our souls. So listen and live. Remember the Shabbat day and abstain from work. Let's begin. Exodus chapter 35. Verses 1 to 3. Verse 1. And Moshe gathered all the congregation of the children of Yeshua together. Was there anyone else? Hmm. This is your target group. And said unto them, These are the words which Yahuwah have commanded, that you should do them, not just hear them, but do it. Verse 2. Six days shall you do all your work. But on the seventh day. There shall be to you a holy day. A set apart day. A Shabbat. Of rest. Keyword. Rest. To Yahuwah. Whosoever doeth work therein. On that day shall be put to death. There's the penalty for doing work on the Shabbat day. Verse 3, listen to the command. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Shabbat day. On the Shabbat day, no kindling of a fire. Hmm. Let's see what happens next. Numbers chapter 15 verses 32 to 35. Verse 32. And while the children of Yashar were in the wilderness, 
they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Hmm. Was it not clear to him that he was not to do any work? Was there an excuse attached? What was he going to use the sticks for? Verse 33. And they that found him gathering these sticks brought him unto Mashe and Aharun and unto all the congregation. Verse 34. And he put him inward. He was under guard because it was not declared what should be done with him. Why not? They weren't sure. They knew what the command said, but they were not sure what to do next. Verse 35, So they inquired of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah said unto Mashe, The man that was gathering these sticks, Upon the Shabbat day, shall surely be put to death. Do you think he's playing? Every word that proceeds from his mouth is divine law. And anyone who denies that, you shall be put to death. But look who's going to carry out this edict, this penalty, and all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. So you're supposed to take this guy outside the camp and stone him until he dies. Why is all the congregation included? So that you can see what you will miss by keeping the Father's commandments. Who was supposed to carry out the penalty phase? Mm -hmm. We were. Judgment. Do you know that the reason that the nation fell and went into chaos is because the children of Yeshua did not carry out the judgment phase? They didn't want to do it. So wickedness thrived in the camp over the time, over years. And the nation became more wicked every day. Now, what was he gathering these sticks for? 1611. KJV dictionary definition, the word is kindle. Hmm. One, to set on fire. What do you set on fire? The wood, the sticks in this case, to cause to burn with flame. Cause what to burn with flame? The sticks. To light. To light what? The sticks. As to, see the word kindle, gather sticks in order to light a fire. So the man's intent when he went out to gather sticks on the Shabbat day was to come home after he did work gathering and then light a fire. Lecto wood fuels. Kindling wood. I wanted to know what it meant. Is the name used for small wood pieces used for fire starting purposes? Can't start the fire without the wood. So the first step is to go out and gather it. Kindling is usually lit with a fire lighter or sticks of tinder. In turn, its fire lights your main firewood or briquette fuel. So kindling 
Wood is wood that is used to make a fire. And what the man was doing was gathering these sticks to bring them home to cause to burn with flame. To light it. That is forbidden on the Shabbat day. Let's go a little deeper. This is the Paleo Hebrew before 585 years before the Mashiach came upon the earth. The word for kindle in the ancient tongue is Tabaru. Tabaru. Hmm. Totally different from kindle. Do you see the text here? Let me attempt to read it in the ancient tongue the way our ancestors would have read it. La Tabaru Ash Bakol Mashabat Yakam Bayam Ha Shabbat. What does that mean? Let's see if the ancient chart can show us what this word ta ba ru means. Remember the letters in Hebrew? They have meaning. Maybe we can find the meaning of this word ta ba ru on this chart. We surely can't glean anything from the Europeans. Stop going to their commentaries to try to learn. Cut them out altogether. Learn this skill for yourself so you can tear apart every passage that they translated in this book to see if they translated it or transliterated it correctly. Come all the way down to the bottom. You'll see a word. Tau. What does it mean? Crossed sticks. Hmm. What do you do when you're going to light a fire? Don't you cross the sticks? And you put a little of the dried grass on top? And you take either your rocks or your pieces of metal and scrape them together for a spark. And when it lights the grass, you blow on it until the wood or the sticks catch on fire. The letter is TA. T A. If you go to the ancients, and early, see the first column, early. When you go to the ancients, they used pictographs. Not words, pictographs. To describe exactly what they were trying to convey. Just like in Egypt, they used hieroglyphs. What did they use here? Crossed sticks. Has nothing to do with this cross that you're talking about in Christianity, foolishness. The cross is a curse. Cursed is anyone who is hung on a tree. How do you use the symbol of a curse, the symbol of death, to signify what you believe? How foolish were we? Let me get back to the lesson. So it's two cross sticks that you would put together in order to light a fire. So we got the first letter. What is the last, next letter? Ba. Go up to the top. The second letter from the top, you'll see bet. What does it mean? Tent floor plan. Mm-hmm. In other words, your house, your habitation, your dwelling. So we have 
sticks, then we have your dwelling place. Two letters now. Here's our third letter. On, come down. You'll see on the, in the early column, it'll look like an I. On, I. I Means see, watch, no shade. Hey, watch that you keep this commandment. Then what is our fourth letter? They would say it's called Resh. It's the third letter from the bottom. Resh. Look in the pictograph. What does it signify? The head of a man. That's you. You, the children of Yesharo. You have to keep these laws. All right, what is our next letter? The next letter is WA. Come back up, you'll see W A W. What does it mean? The picture means tent peg. It's the hook that you secure the tent into the ground. So here it is again. The place where you dwell. Your habitation. Yeah where they were living in the wilderness. It was in their tents. So we see that the cross sticks are there. Mm -hmm. So it's telling us something about these cross sticks. And the first person that it speaks to is you. Do not go out and gather Sticks. That's what kindling should mean. Here's my breakdown. From the ancient text, before 585 years before the Mashaya came upon the earth. But first, let's read the translation that is supplied by the KJV, the King James Version, up top. For Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Remember what a translation is. It supplies you the meaning of the text. Transliteration basically has to deal with the names. You come from Hebrew and you find the corresponding letters that would match the Hebrew letters. And then you transcribe them, write them down on paper so that you may get the phonetic sound, and the phonetic spelling. Okay, let's read. You, ye, shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Shabbat day. Hmm. So we got kindle, fire, habitation, Shabbat. Let's come down to the ancient text. Let's see what that has to say. La, you. <laughs> Second word, Tabaru. Kindle. They said that they came from H119 in the Strong's Concordance for the Blue Letter Bible, and the word that is used there is Ba'ar. Hmm. What is missing? The Ta and the Ru. Doesn't that mean something? Ta is two cross sticks. And the Ra represents the head of a man. And the wa represents your tent. Third word, ash, fire, burn. I wonder if they got the word ashes from the Hebrew text. Remember what English is. It is a conglomerate of different languages joined together to make one. They can come from anywhere on you. Fourth word. Ba, call. Question mark there. It's not used in the text whatsoever. There's not even any reference to it. They left it out. If you can find it, please let me know. Fifth word. 
Ma Shabbat Ta Yakum. What does that mean? Tent. Dwellings. In Strong's Concordance, they use this word. Mashab. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that the O has taken on an A sound? Do you see what's on top of it? Ma Shab. You see, in their language, they can twist their letters for different pronunciations. Here's the sixth word. Bayam. The day. And the seventh word. Ha. Shabbat. The Shabbat. Did you notice that Shabbat only has one B? That is correct. But we use two Bs in the modern language. But I want you to look at something. Look at the fifth word. Inside of Ma Shabbat Ta Yakam, you see Shabbat there. What does Ma Shabbat Ta Yakam mean? Tent dwellings. Where are you supposed to rest? In your house. Where's the Shabbat to be carried out? In your dwellings. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, look on the bottom. What you are actually looking at is the children of Yesharo progressing to the next level. If we learn this skill, we can translate, transliterate, transcribe the text for ourselves. And not come from an agenda. We're looking for the truth. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? This is a skill that we need. These are the last days. Knowledge is greatly increased. Use this knowledge to overcome your captors, your translators your enemies. Here's my breakdown. You, La, shall not go out of your tent to gather sticks, kindle, tabaru, to burn, ash, in your dwellings, ma shabata yakam, on the day, bayaum, of the Shabbat. Ha. Shabbat. Let me read it straightforward. You shall not go out of your tent to gather sticks. To burn in your dwellings. On the day of the Shabbat. Now that explains it much better. When you begin to understand the text. Translation, transliteration, transcription, you can do this also. It is not as hard as it may seem. Just apply yourself. My questions. How did they keep warm? If they couldn't have a fire. Did they have goat skins? all types of animal skins, blankets to keep warm? Well, from the beginning of time, the best way for you to keep warm is to light a fire. Hmm. But isn't that prohibited on the Shabbat day? To have a fire? Well, what is prohibited from what we read is to kindle a fire. What does that entail? You have to go out, gather the wood, bring it back to your tent, 
and then light the fire. Which was the work part? The gathering of the wood. That is prohibited on the Shabbat day. But what if on the sixth working day you've already gathered your wood to last for that 12 hours to sunrise? Mm -hmm. And when the fire begins to wane, it's already lit before the sun goes down. When the fire begins to wane, you just pick up a log and put it on the fire to keep it going to the sunrise. Is that prohibited? Find it if you believe that it is. But it is it is clear that the person who violated the law went out to gather the sticks on the Shabbat. It said nothing about if you already have your sticks in your tent, that it is prohibited for you to take one and put it on the fire to keep it going. Did they warm their food? If so, how did they do so? Hmm. Well, the only way you can warm it is if you have the fire already there. Or maybe you just kept it near the fire to keep it at a certain temperature. Is that prohibited? No, I didn't find it. What the Bible says is bake what you can bake and boil what you can boil and save, store some up for the next day. Yeah. So you're not boiling it or baking it. It's already cooked. You're just keeping it near the fire to keep it warm. Just like you're keeping your body warm during that day. So is fire prohibited? Okay, let me give you a scenario. At nighttime, it gets dark. I live in Florida. And it gets so dark on certain times of the month when the moon is just beginning to grow that you can't see anything. But if you have a fire, you have illumination. You can see who's in the tent with you, communicate, sing, read a passage from Torah, worship and glorify the Most High, clap, praise, and glorify He who is seated upon the throne. Don't you need a little light? Mm hmm. In order to carry all of that out. So fire is not prohibited. But going out to gather the sticks in order to start the fire is prohibited. Your fire should have been started on the sixth working day and kept going straight through. How do you keep it going? Well, you've already gathered your kindling wood, and you put it on the fire. Have any of you thought this thing out like this? Here's another question. How can the Shabbat be a delight if you're freezing? If your food is cold? If you have to stay in darkness? How can it be a delight? I think not. It seems that you have been sentenced to torture. How will the people gravitate towards the Shabbat if they know that they have to be cold? Their food would be cold. 
they will not have any light in their tent. Are you starting to get this thing? Hey, what was the guy stoned for? Was he stoned for lighting the fire? He never got that far. He was out there doing work, gathering sticks, and he was caught. So he had no chance to light the fire. But what was his intent? He was going out to kindle, gather the sticks to light the fire. Mm Mm-hmm. That was his intent. If he would have came back to his tent, he would have lit it. And then what was he going to do? Was he trying to keep warm? Was he going to cook a meal? We don't know. It is not in the text. But what is in the text is that he was stoned for gathering sticks on the Shabbat. Hmm. Exodus. Chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Verse 8. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it set apart. We forgot. But in these last days, in this time of trouble, Yah has brought his ways back to our Remembrance. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor. You have six working days to do all your labor. That's including gathering the sticks, baking and boiling, mm -hmm, and do all your work. Everything must be done before the Shabbat in the evening. Verse 10, but the seventh day, the seventh day after the six working days is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, who is the mighty one. This is his day. This is a sign between you and him. This will make you his. What are you now? Who do you belong to? The world? If you're not keeping the Shabbat, you do not have that sign in your forehead that will identify you on that day. In this day, the seventh day, the Shabbat of Yahuwah, who is the mighty one, On that day, you, here it is again, you shall do no work. None. Everything should be done already. Now, here's a special command. I want you to pay attention very carefully. We're speaking to the leaders of the household. The father and the mother together or the single father, or the single mother. Thou, that's you again. You are responsible to make sure that everyone else that is living in your household, that is in your dwelling place, you nor your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, or the cattle. We don't have cattle. Well, maybe some of us do. But most of us have pets. Yeah. Fido. 
is not to go out and gather the paper for you in the morning. Even he has to rest. Or the stranger, the visitor, mm -hmm. your company that has come over, yeah, even him, you are responsible to make sure that he does not do any labor or any work on the Shabbat day that is within your gates. It's in your house, your dwelling place. In their case, the tent. If you're the head of the household, you are the one who is responsible for this. You have to make sure everyone complies with the rules and the regulations. Let me tell you something else. If the person decides that they're going to get up, take their shower, get dressed, and then they go to work, which is outside of your home, you can't control that. What you are to do is to police your household. You see what it says? Within your gates. So you are to police your household. And you're responsible for all of these people to make sure that they keep this Shabbat as long as they're in your gates. Verse 11, for in six days, Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. And he rested. No, he ceased from his labors on the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahuwah blessed the Shabbat day and hallowed it. He set it apart. He set it above all the other days of the week. This is a great day. This is the day of Yahuwah. This is the day that he has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Can you rejoice if you're cold? Can you rejoice if your food is cold? Can you rejoice if you have to dwell in darkness? We have to think this thing over. Let me tell you about the Jews. I lived amongst the Jews for maybe 20 years. I know quite a bit of them. Matter of fact, some of them were my best friends. Yeah. I had a business right in the heart of the Jewish community. I watched them every week as they came to get all of their provisions for the Shabbat day. I mean, it was crazy because the supermarket was right across the street from my store, the Jewish supermarket. And man, they had a whole parking lot. And then in our parking lot, we had to complain all the time because they were in such a rush to finish everything before the Shabbat that they would park anywhere that they wanted to double park, triple park, just to get in the store, get their provisions, get out and get home and prepare before the sun went down on their Saturday Sabbath on Pope Gregory's calendar. I learned a lot from them. I learned a lot about intent. All week long, they look forward to this day. You can't look forward to a day if it's going to be torture or painful for you. You can't delight in it. But here's something that they would do. Remember verse 10, that you're responsible to make sure that even your manservant or your maidservant doesn't do any work? Well, they choose what they call a goy. <laughs> and the goy is usually a black woman from the islands. 
That's what they mostly had in their households in New York. And they would have these women on the Shabbat day warm their food, turn on the lights, set their tables, and they were getting paid for it. Tell me, is that a violation of the Shabbat? According to verse 10, it is. But yet they do it anyway. We cannot follow any of the examples that they have given us especially that Saturday Shabbat. That's their Sabbath. We follow the Shabbat of Yahuwah, who is the Mighty One. Where is His Shabbat located? In the heavens. Continue to part five. Shalom.